I, I'm going to respectfully disagree with some of my colleagues' statements. Uh, I, I do want to echo what Scott has said. I'll, I'll make a couple of points. I think it is possible to cut less than 3 percent of the federal budget without causing these devastating consequences. To go to the earlier question, I think you can achieve these reductions without, for example, jeopardizing children's access to vaccinations. I think you can achieve these kinds of reductions. Let's be clear. The spending in federal, the federal budget, the federal budget will actually be larger even after these reductions than it was last year. So I think there is a responsible way to cut less than 3 percent of the federal budget. I think it's time for the president to show leadership. I think it's time for him to send to Congress a prioritized list of reductions that preserves critical services. Every governor here has had to balance their budgets during tough economic times. Every family out there has to balance their budget, isn't allowed to spend more than they need. Every business has had to become more efficient, tighten their belt. The reality is it can be done. This administration has an insatiable appetite for new revenues. Over $600 billion in new spending on this president, almost $6 trillion of new debt, over $600 billion of new taxes just in the most recent deal, enough's enough. Now is the time to cut spending. It can be done without jeopardizing the economy. It can be done without jeopardizing critical services. The president needs to stop campaigning, stop trying to scare the American people, stop trying to scare states. Every American knows, Al, just ask the American people, do they believe there's at least 3% of the federal government spending that is wasteful spending? And they would tell you there is room to cut the waste without jeopardizing critical services. So, so I happen to disagree. I made a suggestion the president didn't agree with it. I, I said if these cuts really are uh, that devastating, would he at least consider delaying some of the new spending instead of cutting existing programs? For example, the Medicaid expansions. And he, did, he disagreed with that. He did not want to do that. He did not agree. If these cuts are so devastating, why are we spending new dollars to create new programs? So I, I respectfully did. Look, he, he basically, uh, and I don't want to put words in the president's mouth. My sense was uh, that he felt that the election has consequences, and he felt that uh, the majority, he, he was not open to, to having that conversation again. But again, I, I'll let the White House speak for themselves. Bottom line is, I, I, you'll hear a diversity of views from the different governors. My perspective is you can cut less than 3 percent of the federal budget without devastating consequences. The, the, the president needs to show leadership. Now is the time for him to work to avert some of these uh, consequences. Louisiana, uh, governor there, Bobby Jindal, uh, speaking there at the mic at the White House. I want to bring in, I want to bring in back Ali because, Ali, I know that you've got some, uh, some things that you're taking issue with here. But is he correct when he says that, that uh, it's not going to hurt the way we no. think it is? And it's, not, it's, it's this weird math that the Republicans are using, that it's just 3 percent of the federal budget. That would be fine if you were cutting 3 percent across the board. That sounds very reasonable, except you can't touch entitlements. So it's it's three percent of a small part of the federal budget, which makes it a very big part of some major agency. So it's just misleading stuff that Bobby Jindal is saying, number one. Number two, when he says families understand they have to live within their budget. I don't know a lot of families who buy a house with cash. Buying a house on a mortgage, is that living within your budget or is that not living within your budget? Because you'd have to be 80 years old to be able to buy a house with cash. We have an understanding in our society, it may be flawed, that we borrow money based on our future earnings potential. All people do that, companies do that, and governments do that. Now, there's a point at which you can say we've gone too far with that or we're too much of a risk not paying back, so we'll end up paying a higher interest rate. When you borrow too much money, your personal interest rate goes up, right, your credit right. cards go up. That is not, but to suggest this within your means and balanced budget nonsense is just misleading. That is not how families live, it's not how businesses conduct themselves, and it is certainly not since the history of time the way governments run themselves. Bobby Jindal so, is a smart guy who runs a state. He, he needs to not talk like this, and it's become very common to hear this kind of stuff uh, coming out in, in, in these press conferences. Well,